God is all surrounding encompassing force and we really get to understand God in the connections that we can forge with other people. It's in every relationship. It's all about how we can actually bring out that compassion and that caring for each other, that that's where we can realize God on earth. Salofa, my name is Amy Tialu and I'm a pastor's kid. I have always been a pastor's kid. I was actually born in Canada and we lived in Canada for about six years and we moved to Samoa after that. Four years in Samoa, it felt like 40 years. <laughs> it was so intensely different from Canada. Whatever genes had to be activated in those first few years, we missed out on that window. So we're like, okay, you're not dealing with Samoa, we'll just take you to Australia but I didn't appreciate it until many, many years later. Well, right before I became a minister, I was a trade economist with the Australian government. And before that, I was an applied biologist specializing in genetics. I became a pastor because we've been wanting to help, especially the Pacific Island children in, uh, in Canberra where we were because I go to work and I see some of them walking to school, no shoes, and it's a very cold place, uh, Canberra. And a friend who was a minister told me that if I want to influence the lives of young Pacific Islanders, I needed to, <laughs> to become a minister. He said it's the only person the Pacific Islanders listen to. Dad comes home one day and he says he's applied to study theology. And I thought, okay, I don't really see how that impacts me, but sure, if that's what you need to do, go for it. Because in Australia, the culture is such that the real responsibility is only on the minister. It doesn't draw in the rest of the family unless they are willing and they make that choice. It wasn't until we came to New Zealand that it was entirely different. You know, the expectations of the minister, they do extend to the whole family. And I don't think even Dad fully appreciated that until we came here. It was a steep learning curve. And especially in that gentle way, Samoans won't always tell you straight up what they expect from you. You know, they'll drop it like a hint, like, oh, you know, you're, you're awful, let's get you some bulikasi. I think that will look very nice on you. Instead of saying, you're wearing the wrong thing to church, let's get you, you know, something different. <laughs> When I became a minister, I guess it was probably a kind of selfish thing. I didn't really know what Samoan people expect of the minister's uh, children, because uh, I was not in a Samoan church most of my adult life. I was with a Palangi church in Samoa. And basically, I haven't really been in charge with any Samoan group in all uh, 40 years. Yeah. So when I got here, I think the church expected me to, you know, by default, simple things like always be present at church services. And I couldn't do that because I had other commitments or I was looking to study. Um, I think they also expected me to be an active member of the choir. And I didn't do that either. I was trying to help them run a holiday program. And I think a lot of our, our leaders weren't accustomed to someone who was so strict. <laughs> I'm not saying I ran it like a military program or anything, but I, I realized I couldn't just go around and tell people what to do. When she comes, they really enjoy having her. 
when she goes to church, the children would just laugh me, they would just call Amy and run to her, and, and the grown-ups also. Because as you know, Amy is uh, someone who, you know, she gets along really well with uh, people. And, uh, if they had any frustration, was that she was not always there. The most things that have probably changed in the last three years since we got here are the expectations of each other. So they're just happy if I come to church. <laughs> Instead of, you know, they still drop hints once in a while, like, oh, we'd love to see you at this event over here. But they do it in different ways now that, that really resonate well with me and that let me know they're coming from a place of love, not of judgment. I am a pansexual. Humans are all humans to me and I don't care. It's just what's in your mind and what's in your heart. That's what I connect to. At one point, and I was still a teenager, I think I was still coming to terms with the fact that I was capable of loving more than just men. And it was really hard for me to reconcile that with my faith because nobody else in my church was standing up and was either clearly out or was was talking about it in a way at the time that was inclusive and it was just getting too painful to keep hearing messages about the fact that you are a sin like you are a physical manifestation of a sin and I was like then why am I here one of the things that we're always taught from the earliest age is that, you know, Jesus loves you and he loves you unconditionally. And it's like, sorry. If you believe that Jesus loves you unconditionally, then you were made this way for a reason, even if it's hard. And it is really hard because I think a lot of people, they don't have to interrogate the way that they are, the reason why they are. For me, it's really been accepting that love and all the responsibilities that come with it. It's a blessing in disguise, you know. Not all blessings mean that. It's easy. It means sometimes you've been given this opportunity, this charge to do something with the life you have. Not very long ago, they thought that uh, any other sexuality other than the whole heterosexuality was a choice. But we now know it is not a choice. It's... And who am I to tell them they cannot be who they are? Again, let's play. In a very young age, we assure them that we love them. I, I found that if she was secure in our love, which she was, I found that, was a, that would have been enough. Just being father or being a parent is the greatest experience for me. So anything else, anything beyond that is a bonus for me. But it's been really a big bonus for me. I think the thing I've probably learned the most from my church community really is how to be more Samoan but in a way that also complements the person I already was. It wasn't a remaking of myself, it was finding the way that I can rise to all these new opportunities. We are such a culturally immersive church. Everyone speaks Samoan and they're very forgiving. They're just so happy when you try. I can walk up to any of the Goya Inga and just say, you know, Malo Suifu, and they will just be, they'll be ecstatic, you know, and that kind of confidence that it builds in you, it gives me 
the real inspiration to keep trying and learning the culture and the language. Amy is a wonderful personality and uh, I just enjoy being with her. And uh, when I see her with uh, our church people, it's, yeah, they, <laughs> maybe because she doesn't come a lot. So when they see, when they see her, they really enjoy being with her. I'm very proud as a father. I really love my dad. Since he has become a minister, he has really been forced to confront and reflect on the way that he does things and, and why he does it. And the fact that someone of his age, of his position, has put his pride aside to really keep his mind open to to keep learning and to keep understanding new ideas and to accept me. The amount of love that he shows for our family and for our church community, it's amazing. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.